I'm Carly, the Young Post Deputy Editor, and this is the SCMP HKDSE Mock Exam Paper 2019 Analysis. Paper 1. Reading. Candidates generally answered the gap fill summary questions, such as question 4 and 41, quite well. However, avoidable mistakes were made by those who chose a word to complete the gap, which was incorrect for grammatical reasons. For example, pairing a singular subject with a plural verb, or vice versa, or using the wrong part of speech. Simple pronoun reference questions were also well answered, though some weaker candidates chose a word from the text which was not grammatically correct. The same type of mistake as with the gap fill questions. The true, false, not given questions proved particularly challenging in these passages. There were three main reasons for this. The first was that candidates allowed their background knowledge to influence their answers, rather than focusing on what the relevant part of the text actually said, e.g. question 1, part 3. Candidates should remember that the opinions expressed in the passages are not necessarily conventional ones, especially when the passages are opinion pieces, as was the case with both parts B1 and B2, and also incidentally in part B2 in the 2019 HKEAA exam. A second source of error in the true, false, not given questions was that candidates missed the qualified opinion implied by the use of modal verbs in the text. For example, the statement in question 1, part 2 was, animal owners will definitely be taken to court if they receive an improvement notice. Many candidates missed the implication of might be prosecuted in the text, which meant the statement was false. They perhaps assumed that this phrase had the same meaning as would be prosecuted, which would mean that the statement was true. A third source of error was when candidates missed a phrase in the text that was a synonym for a key phrase in the question statement. When checking whether a statement is true, the main strategy is to identify a synonym or paraphrase in the text. For example, the statement in question 23, part 2, people are getting married later because they need money for a flat, echoes the text in paragraph 4. Expensive housing, long working hours, are reasons why people delay the decision to marry. Conversely, when checking if a statement is false, candidates should look for a phrase in the text indicating the opposite meaning to the statement. For example, in question 64, part 1, the statement in the question child-free and childless are synonyms, is contradicted in the text in paragraph 9, which reads, there is a moral distinction made between child-free and childless. Candidates had some difficulty answering the two questions which focused on typographical features in the text, questions 5 and 47. Fewer than 20% answered question 5 correctly, and fewer than 40% got question 47 right. Question 5 asked why the phrase behavioural needs was in quotation marks. The answer is that the phrase was a quotation from the government proposals. Question 47 asked why the word schadenfreude was in italics. The answer is that it is a foreign word. Candidates should know that quotation marks are primarily used to indicate direct speech or an extract from a speech or a text. They can also be used, typically with a single inverted comma, to indicate the title of a book, magazine, film, etc. Italics are commonly used to indicate a foreign word or an unfamiliar specialist or technical term. They can also be used, like quotation marks, to indicate the name of a book, magazine, or film, and also for the names of ships, paintings, etc. In general, open-ended questions, such as question 43, proved more challenging than other items. There was a tendency for some candidates to quote overlong chunks from the text in their answers. These chunks may on occasion have contained the correct answer, but they also contained irrelevant additional information. Such answers were therefore marked as wrong. Candidates need to refine their answers to focus purely on the question asked. 